Hi everyone, this is John Choi from CM Square. In this video, I'm going to make a uh, past paper solutions for May 19. It's a paper 2 time zone 1. So in this paper, the time is one and a half hour, and that's session A and session B total. So session A, there are seven questions in total, and session B, there are three questions. So let's get started. Question 1. Ten students were asked for the distance in km from their home to school. The responses are recorded below. So there are like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, yeah, 10 data in total. For these data, find the mean distance yeah, from a student's home to school. So put the two can use the GDC to calculate it. So we go to the statistic and put all these values into list one. Okay, and then go to cal setting is one variable. So list one is the x list and frequency is one for each number. So yeah, and then go to one variable. So the mean is 4.82. Okay, part B. The following box and fiscal plot represents this data. So, uh, for box and fiscal plot, the first one is mean, the last one is mass. Mean and mass. Maximum. And that's Q1, that's median, or you can say Q2, and that's Q3. Yeah. So, find the fan of P. So, find the median. So, in GAC, we can scroll, scroll down to see median. So, 4.25. So for C, find the interquartile range. So interquartile range equals Q3 minus Q1. That's 8 minus 3. So 8 minus 3 equals 5. So that's all. Question 2. Consider the graph of function f of x equal a bracket x plus 10 square plus 15. All x are real number. A, write down the coordinate of the first. So write down, you don't need to calculate because that's what we call first test form. Because x minus h squared plus k is the first test form. Where h and k are the uh, x and y coordinate of the first test. So now, the coordinate of the first test is negative 10. Because x minus h and the h is the x value. So now here, which means x minus a negative 10. All right, and then a positive 15 is the y coordinate. So B, the graph F has a y intercept at negative 20, find the value of A. So y intercept means the point is on the y axis, somewhere here, negative 20. So which means the point is zero and then negative 20. So now we can sub x0 and y equals negative 20 into the function to solve the a values. So negative 20 equals a 0 plus 10 square plus 15. And then we have to move the 15 to the left hand side. So minus 15. So minus 45 equals a times 10 square is 100. So a equals negative negative 45 divided by 100 is negative 0 0.35 pass C point P A B lie on the graph of F so find the value of B so if that's the point on the graph we can sub x equal 8 and y equal B and then we can solve the value of B so let's rewrite the function fx equals negative 0 0.35 x plus 10 square plus 15 and then we can sub y equals b and then x equals 8 and now we can put in calculator to solve it 0 0.35 times 18 square plus 15. So negative 98.4. That's the value of B.
Okay, question three. Consider the function f of x equals x squared times e to the power three x. X are all real number, and find f prime x. So differentiation is calculus. So how can we differentiate this one? x squared times e to the power three x. We have to use the product rule because multiply, right? So don't forget to use the product rule as multiply. So product rule is like we copy the first term and then multiply the differentiation of the second term. So how to differentiate e three x? It's e three x times three. So we just copy the whole things and then multiply the differentiation of the power. That's how we can differentiate the uh, exponential. Plus copy the second term and then differentiate x squared the first term, which is two x. And then, yeah, so here that means 3x squared e 3x plus 2x e 3x. That's the answer in part A. Part B. The graph of f have a horizontal tangent line at 0 and x equal a. So find the value of a. So uh, horizontal tangent line means, so tangent line, the slope, I mean for a horizontal line the slope is zero. So slope of a tangent line is f prime of x. So remember f prime means the slope or the gradient of the curve. So that equals zero. So which means f prime x equals zero. Right? So how can we solve this function equals zero? We can use a GDC, we can plot the graph of this f prime x functions. Yes, and now we can set the window, maybe from negative 10 to like um, 10, yeah, the same for y. And then we are tracing the root, so uh, g solve the root. Yeah, so x equal negative 0 0.667366 fake. So that's the value of a. Okay. And question four. Let f double prime equals cos 2x times sine 2x. X is between 0 to 1. So sketch the graph of f double prime on the grid below. So the give you a graph paper is free mark. How can we get all these free mark? Yeah. So uh, we just put the equation in GDC and then just copy it. Okay, cos 2x sine 6x. And then go to window. So go to window from 0 to 1. And the y mean is negative 0.5 and 1.5 is the y mass. Like this. So how can we graph it accurately? So we have to chase all the roots and also the maximum and minimum point. Sometimes you have to chase the y intercept as well. So let's chase all the roots. So 0, uh, 0 0.5 to something. So 5 to something is here. And then 0 0.785. 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So I was around here. And then, yeah, one more here. Oh, no more, yeah. And let's trace the maximum point and minimum point. Yeah, so G soft, we find maximum point first. So it's, not, uh, it's 0 0.23 something and then 0 0.88 something. So it's here. And then. I think one more mass one point here. Yeah, 0 0.927. 0 0.927 and then 0 0.18 something. 1 and 2, so around here. And one more point, minimum point. So 0 
4 of 3 and negative 0 0.1 next something so here and it's ending at 1 here so let's find when x equal 1 what is the y values so we'll go back to here sub x equal 1 so cos 2 times sine 6 so that's 0 0.116 so when x equal 1 that's 0 0.116 so that's the graph maximum point and then go back to the x-intercept and the minimum point and then pass through the x-intercept as well and then maximum point and then ending at x equal 1 here so that's how you get all the free mark remember plotting a graph you have to find all the vertices uh, x y intercept and then yeah I mean that's all Find the x coordinate of the point of inflection of the graph at. So point of inflection, which means the double prime equals zero. So for f double prime equals zero, that means this graph the root. So we see these two roots. Okay. And then the key thing is that not only the f double prime equals zero and also uh, the f double prime before and after that point so have a change of sign so maybe from positive to negative or negative to positive I mean the double prime values before and after that point so we see so this point what is the value of that point let me find it again Uh, that's roots. This is 0 0.524, and then this one is 0.785. So for 0 0.524, for this point, before this point, this first, uh, the second derivative is a positive value. It's above the x-axis, so which means concave up. So remember, double prime is positive, is concave up, and where small than zero is concave down. So it's changing from concave up to concave down, from positive to negative. So that's the uh, point of inflection. So x equal negative, uh, I mean 0 0.524 is the answer. And then we have one more here, 0 0.758, because this point before and after the second derivative is also changed from uh, negative to positive. So from concave down to concave up. So it's 0 0.785. So if you see there's no change, uh, then that's not a POI. So for x equals 0, yeah, the double prime is also equal 0, but we can't see a change uh, from negative to positive here from the graph. Yeah, because x is between 0 to 1, so we can't write x equals 0. So part C, hence find the value of x for which the graph is concave down so concave down again double prime uh, uh, small than zero so double prime is the y coordinate of all the points so see this part is where the f double prime is negative because below x axis so all these points on this part of the graph the y coordinate is negative so which means the f f double prime is negative so which means x between these two values 0 0.524 and 0 0.785 uh, yep and question 5 a puzzle consists of many differently shaped pieces that fit together to form a picture yeah so uh, just doing a 1000 piece pixels she started by shorting the edge pieces from the interior pieces. Six times she stopped it and counted how many each of the type uh, she found. The following table indicates this information. So with X and Y edges piece and the interior pieces. And then she modeled the relationship between the variable during uh, using the regression line Y equal A X plus B. It's regression line. So uh, something about correlation coefficient maybe or to find the best fit line, the line of best fit, the equation of it. So part A, write down the value of A and B. So write down just three mark. Yeah. You can use a GDC to calculate it. Okay, part A. 
So we can go back to uh, statistic and delete all the numbers here, clear all the lists. So this one we can put all the x values, 16. Yeah, and then for this two we can put all the y value. And then now we can go to, um, no, cal regression. So we have to go to setting first. So x list is this one and the frequency is one. And the second variable is list, list two. Yeah, two variable y list. So x list, list one. Y list, list two. And for these two frequencies, one. Yeah, and then go to regression, x, a x plus b. So you see a x plus b where a, same format here, a x plus b. So a is 6.92986425. I will copy the whole values and then run up to 3 sigfig as the answer. Because usually the next part, we have to use the equation to find uh, either x and y. So if we use the random value for the a and b to uh, do in part b, then we'll get the uh, sometimes we will get the wrong values. Yeah, we we'll have to use the whole value to do in part b. So b equals 8.807693, so which equals 8.81. Yep. So part b, use the model to predict how many edges. I mean, how many H pieces she had found when she had shot a total 750 pieces? So, total 750 pieces, which means X plus Y equals 750. Total means H pieces plus interior pieces. And now uh, we are finding how many H pieces, that means we are solving the X values. So from the equations, how can we solve x value? We can make y subject. So y equals 750 minus x. And then the y is replaced by 750 minus x. So 750 minus x equal 6.93x plus 8.81. Yeah. So we can write it as a free sigfig here, but we when we put it in calculator, we can't uh, just put the free sigfig value. And now we can solve the x values. So first of all, um, we move the x to here, and then we move the 8.81 here. So which means 750 minus 8.81. So minus 8.807693. And then divide by 6.92986425 plus 1x because we move the negative x to here. So x equal 93.46 something. Um, so which means 93 pieces. Yeah. It's not enough to make 94 pieces. So x equals 93. So question 6, consider the expansion of x squared plus 1.2 power n, where n is all integer, and n must be greater or equal to 3. Given that the coefficient of the term containing x6 is greater than 200,000, find the smallest possible value of n. So uh, remember the tr plus 1, or the, what we call the nth term, you can find from formula book the uh, binomial formula, binomial expansion, which is n r, a m minus r, and then b to the power r. So now, uh, since we don't know which term containing the um, x power six, so we don't know which term. That means we don't know the r values. If that's the first term, that we call it t one, where r equals zero. If that's second term, then we call it T2. So where R equals one, so on and so forth, right? So uh, now we don't know the F term, so we don't know the R values, so we can just write TR plus one here. That is N R and then A is X square 
and minus r and then b is 1.2 to the power r yeah and now we can expand here i usually group all the integer in the front and then x to the power 2m minus 2r all right that's all and since the power of x equals 6 so we'll make it equal so which means divide all by 2 so m minus r equals 3 like this and where r equals uh, n minus 3 is r right and the coefficient of the term x6 is greater than 20, uh, 200,000 so something is greater than 200,000 which is the coefficient of x6 so when r equals m minus 3 then the term containing x6 and this is the coefficient so we put it back and r we don't put r because we want to make uh, I mean we want to make only one uh, unknown here to solve the formula so m minus 3 1.2 to the power r and that's replaced by m minus 3 expand this one so n m minus 3 we can use the binomial coefficient here so which means m factorial divided by r factorial which is m minus 3 factorial and then m minus r so m minus m minus 3 so m minus n cancels out and then minus negative 3 is positive 3 factorial and then 1.2 m power 3 m minus 3 is the power and now how can we expand this one yeah so what's mean by m factorial m factorial means n times m minus 1 times m minus 2 okay so n m minus 1 m minus 2 m minus 3 m minus 4 m minus 5 but we'll stop here because m minus 3 m minus 4 m minus 5 which means factorial and minus 3 factorial we don't need to expand it because we can just keep writing it and cancel it out so 3 factorial means 3 times 2 times 1 so which is 6 yeah and now we can just solve the uh, this functions by plotting a graph so mm -hmm. first function is 200,000 and then the second one is 1.2 to the power x minus 3 times x, x minus 1, x minus 2, divided by 6. Yeah, and then we can change the uh, intercept. So, you see 26 point, so n is greater than 26.49 something, so which means n equals to 27. The smallest possible factor of n is 27. So 7. The first term of infinite geometric sequence is 2, 6, 18, 54. The first term of second infinite geometric sequence is Vn, 2, negative 6, 18, negative 54. The term of the first sequence Wn are defined as Wn equals Un plus Vn. So part A. Write down the first three long zero terms of Wn. So that means we have to find uh, let's say w1, w2, w3, but uh, long zero term. So if w1 equals 2 plus 2, so it's 4. And then the second one is 6, minus, uh, 6 plus negative 6, that will be um, 0. And then 18, 18, so 46. And then 54 minus 54, 0 again. So what's the next term? So we see this one. For the first 
uh, geometric sequence, the R is 3. But here, R is negative 3. So you see the number, the material of these two uh, C, uh, series is the same, but the side is all positive for the first one. For the second one, it's alternate, positive, negative, positive, negative. So which means the second, I mean the next term, 54 times 3. 162 and then times 3, 486. So this one, the same, 162 and then negative 486. So, uh, yeah, so 162 plus 162, 3, 2, 4. So that's enough. So the first three long zero terms of W is 486 and 3, 2, 4. Part B, the final series, summation from k equals 1 to 225, WK can also be written in the form summation from k equals 0 to m, 4R to power k. Find the value of R and M. So four R to the power K. That's double K. Four forty six and then three uh, twenty four. So which means the common ratio is forty six divided by four is nine. So you see, there's a uh, geometric. 4 times 9 is 36, and times 9 equals 324. So which means, so you see, that's very similar to the uh, UN of a geometric sequence. U1 times R to the power n minus 1. So U1 is 4. R is the common ratio, so R equals 9. And K is the power m minus 1 here, but we have to find the m here. So 225. So uh, if there are 225 terms, that means there are 225 terms in the uh, series here, but some are 0. So that means we have to divide by 2. It's almost 2.5. So um, that means m equals one one two here, right? M equals one one two. So uh, session B now. Question A. Let f x equals two sine three x plus four. X is all real number. A. The range of f is k, uh, k between k to m. Find the value of k and m. So, you see, we can just plot the uh, f of x in the GDC. So, window from, let's say, uh, negative 10 to 10, and then from negative 10 to 10 as well for y. So let's chase the the range, that means the y values. So let's chase the mass and minimum point. Maximum point is six. And yeah, so maximum point is six, that means m equals six. So uh, let's chase the minimum point. It's two. All right. So, uh, part B, let gx equal 5f times 2x. Find the range of g. So, g is obtained by the transformation of f. So, the range means the y value. y value is only affected by the uh, vertical stretching, this one. So, 5 here is the amplitude, which, I mean, which affects the amplitude. So, 5 will multiply all the value or the y value by 5. So that means the range. The original function, the fx, the range is between 6 to 2. And now both of these two values multiplied by 5. That means 5 times 6, 30. And then 5 times 2 is 10. 
So plus c, c1. The function g can be written in the form gx equal 10 sine bx plus c. Find the value of b and c. So um, let's write the function of g. So 5f2x plus i. Uh, I mean, that's all, yeah. So 5, okay, let's find what's f2x. So f2x means the x here is replaced by 2x. So 2 sine 3 times 2x, 6x. And then plus 4. So that's f2x. And that means gx is 5 times of the whole veins. 5 times 2 sine 6x plus 4. So that's 10 sine 6x plus 20. So which means so which means the value of b is 6 and the value of c is 20. So c2 find the period of g. So period uh, remember the formula that uh, to find the period is period equal to pi divided by b. Okay, so we know b equals 6. So the period is 2 pi over 6, which is pi divided by 3. So that's the period of the uh, graph of g. And last part, part b. The equation gx equal 12 have two solutions. Find both solutions. So since now we know the gx, we can plot it in uh, gc. Because now we are solving the function like gx equals 12, 10 sine 6x plus 20 equals 12. Yeah. And now we can plot two graphs 12 and also gx, 10 sine 6x plus 20. And x is between pi to 4 pi per 3. So pi to 4 pi over 3. And set window from 0 to 15. Yeah, I see two values. Find both solutions. So trace the intercept. 3.82 I mean 3.82 free six fig. And the second one is for question 9. Let f of x equal 16 divided by x. The line L is tangent to the graph of f at x equals 8. Part A, find the gradient of L. So gradient of a tangent is f prime of x. Or the slope of the graph, the slope of a tangent line uh, at a particular point means f prime of x. So first of all, we have to differentiate the uh, f of f of x. So 16 divided by x equals 16x power negative 1. So we just rewrite it and then differentiate negative 16x negative 2. So which means negative 16 divided by x squared. So at the point x equal 8, so f prime 8 with sub x equal 8. So negative 16 divided by x squared is negative 1.4. 1 over 4, I mean, yeah. So part B. L can be expressed in the form R equals 8, 2 plus T, U. Is in vector. So the first one, a2 is position vector, and where t is the parameter, and u is the direction vector. So direction of the straight line l, negative 1 over 4. So it's decreasing like this. So rise over run. That's y value, and that's the x values. So that means shift down by 1 and shift right by 4. Right 4 and down by 1. So that's the meaning of negative 1 over 4. So 
x and y, right? U. So u is shift right by four is positive four. Shift down by one is negative one here. So that's the direction factor of the factor. Part C, the direction factor of y equals x equals one one. Find the acute angle between y equals x and L. So we have both two equation direction factor, one one and four negative one. So how can we find the angle between two factors? So now here, uh, we can use the formula book, angle between two factors. So cos theta v dot u divided by magnitude of v times magnitude of w. So we have to find the magnitude of each, uh, each factor. So cos angle equals 1 1 dot 4 negative 1 divided by magnitude of 1 1 so 1 square plus 1 square times the magnitude of the other one so 4 square plus negative 1 square is 1 yeah so what's, what is the scalar product or you can say the dot product u dot v so which means x times x plus y times y so that's root 2 that's root 16 plus 1 17 so that's 4 plus uh, 4 minus 1. So 3 divided by 2 with 2 with 17. And then we can just find the angle. So 3 divided by root 2 and root 17. So inverse cosine answer. So the theta is 1.03. That's the angle between two factors. So part D, D1, find f dot fx. So that means we sub fx into fx. So that's like fx. So fx, the x is replaced by fx. So 16 divided by f of x, which is 16 divided by 16 over x. So which means times the reciprocal of this one. So 16 times x over 16 cancel out. It's just x. Yeah. Part two. Has rather the inverse of f of x. So how do you find the inverse? So that's original function. Y equals 16 divided by x. Two steps. Swap the x and y. So swap x and y. And then make y subject. That means swap. I mean, uh, how do you make y subject? So it's uh, swap these two, right? So y equals 16 over x. That's the inverse function. So, I mean the same. So part three. Hence or otherwise, find the obtuse angle formed by the tangent of f at x equals 8. That means the line L and the tangent of f at x equals 2. So, um... So that means we have to find a tangent. I mean, this one, the slope is from part A. We know the factor is 4, negative 1, because the slope is negative 1 for 4. Yeah? So we have to do it again, find the slope of the tangent at x equal 2, so which is f prime 2. So f prime x equal negative 16 over x squared. So we sub x equal 2. Divide by 4, so it's negative 4. So negative 4 is like it's like negative 4 divided by 1. So that's y and that's x. So what's mean by negative 4 over 1? It's decreasing like this. Shift down by 4, down by 4, and then shift right by 1. So, mean, so that means the vector is right by 1, so it's 1, positive 1 for x. Down by 4 is negative 4. So now we have the two vector. The factor for x equal 8, this straight line is 4, negative 1. And the other one is 1, negative 4. Again, find the angle. So two factor, right? So we can find the angle again. So cos angle equals u dot v. So 1 times 4 plus. Negative four times negative one, 
and divide by the magnitude. So they have the same magnitude. 4 squared plus 1, so 17. And 17. So which is 8 divided by 17. And let's find the angle. So inverse cosine, inverse cosine 8 over 17. This is 1.8, 1.08. But uh, I've defined the obtuse angle, that means pi minus answer. So this is 2.06. 2.06. Yeah? So, yeah. Because for any two straight line, they have to intersect at. There are two angles you can say. One is obtuse, one is acute angle. Yeah. So we do 118 or pi minus the uh, smaller values so that we get the obtuse angle. Okay, last question, question 10. Yep. There are three six there are three fair six side die. Each die has two green faces, two yellow, and two red faces. All three dies are rolled A1. For the property of rolling exactly one red face. So one red face it can be red in the first one and not red and not red right or not red red and not red or not red not red and the last one is red so which means the first one is red is 2 over 6 then not red is 4 over 6 and then 4 over 6 I think they are the same so we can just multiply by 3 so 2 times 4 times 4 divide by 6 cubed that's just values and then times 3 so 0 0.444 or which means 4 over 9 okay part 2 find the probability of rolling 2 or more red face so exactly one red face What's mean two or more red face? That means actually we can use binomial uh, distribution. Two or more red face means two red face or three red face. Okay, so it means p x equal two plus p x equal three. So for binomial m p right. So m means three times and the probability of getting a uh, successful means getting a right is 2 over 6 so let's find p x equal 2 so we we'll go to manual statistic and then distribution binomial distribution and exactly yeah so x equal 2 so p b p d and three times in total x equal 2 but total is 3 3 time trial and then the probability is 2 over 6 so it's 0 0.222 right and then p x equal 3 you just go back to change yeah 3 here 0 0.03703 703 and then we can add that up yeah 0 0.222 plus 0 0.03 Three seven zero three seven zero three. Sorry. So that is zero point two five nine. That's the answer. Uh, for getting uh, two or more red faces. Okay, part B. Tab plays a game using these die. The rules are having a turn means to roll all three dice. He wins 10 for each green face, road, and adds this to his winning. After a turn, Tag can either so first end the game, so keep his winning, or have one more turn, okay? So try to increase the chance to win, okay? If two or more red faces are rolled in the turn, all winning are lost, and the game ends. Okay, so 
show that after I would turn the probability that Ted at exactly ten doors to his winning is one third. So that's in part B here. So uh, the probability is one third. We have to show this answer exactly ten dollars. So what's mean by ex exactly ten dollars? He wins ten for each green face road. Okay. So rolling a green face, then he get ten dollars, right? Okay. So how can we find the probability that equals one over three? Exactly ten dollars. So exactly ten dollars means. There must be one green face, but what about the rest two uh, dice? The rest two faces cannot be both red. So that means it can be red, uh, green, one green, one red, and one yellow. Or one green, two yellow. Okay, and at most one green, but the remaining two can be both red. So that means it can be both yellow or one red, one yellow. So, but these three can uh, arrange like green, red, yellow, red, yellow, green, or yellow, green, red. Okay. Or also red, green, yellow, green, yellow, red, or yellow, red, green. So, six probability. And then one green and two yellow. So, green, yellow, 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 green, yellow, and yellow, yellow, green. So you can just find each probability and then multiply by 6 and multiply by 3 and then add them up. So green, red, yellow, so 2 over 6 for each of them. And then, yeah, the same, 2 over 6 times 2 over 6 times 2 over 6 as well. Okay, so six, six times two over six Q plus three times two over six Q. So it's one third. See, zero point three 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 is one third. That's part B. Okay, and then part C, the random variable D, the random variable D is the price. Represent how much is added to his winning after a turn. The following table shows a distribution for D, where W represents his winning in the game so far. So, C1, what is the value of X? So, negative W means uh, losing money, right? So, When it will lose money when he get two or more red faces. So what's the probability of getting two or more red faces? If you see a question right down, it's just one mark questions. So you don't need to calculate because remember in A2, part A2, we find the probability of getting two or more red faces. So that's 0 0.259. So that's the value of X. Find the value of y. So probability sum of all the probability equals one. So that means we can set the equation plus y plus one first plus two over nine plus one over twenty-seven equals one. Yeah? And then we can solve the y values. So one is zero point one four eight. 